starts right now. For hours now, firefighters have been at the scene of this fire on the city's east side. Just ahead here on GMSA, we have all the details from firefighters and if there's a cause that they have found. Plus, the search continues for a shooting suspect following a road rage incident. How police say it started and the latest on the victim's conditions. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 68 degrees to start your Saturday morning. Yesterday was a scorcher. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, April 10th. April, yesterday felt like mid-July. I know, it was so hot. I spent all of my outside chores like in the morning mm. and then pretty much just sat in the couch. I'm so impressed with <laughs> in you. The couch. In the couch. <laughs> but I'm very impressed with you. You have taken to social media. You start posting the garden on social Dead. media. If anyone hasn't seen yet, very impressive. Thanks, my hands and back hurt. There you go. All right, Sarah Spivey. <laughs> Are we gonna see those temperatures again today? No. Nice. Oh yeah. Capital in, oh, I was gonna say zero. <laughs> Capital in zero. It's, it's okay. Go. Okay, it's morning. It's it morning. Um, but we are not going to be Good. seeing those temperatures. In fact, temperatures will be 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. Appreciate that one. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, and the reason for that, of course, is a cold front. Earlier, you probably saw how windy it was out there, and it is out there, all because a cool front has moved through. Temperatures this morning are on the cool side. It's 66 degrees at the airport. Temperatures have been falling steadily just within the last hour or so because of that front moving through. Meanwhile, it's in the 50s in Kerrville. But if you have an early Saturday morning, the biggest thing you'll notice out there are the winds. Winds gusting up to 30, 35 miles per hour out there behind that front. And throughout the day today, uh, we will have windy conditions, especially during the first part of the day. But in the afternoon, winds will calm down quite a bit. And it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful weekend for outdoor activities and cooler than the last few days too. So the nicer weather fell just in time for the weekend. Uh, today we'll have low humidity, a high temperature of 84, and then tomorrow's going to be a cool morning. Temperatures in the 50s, a nice day, 87 for the high temperature tomorrow as well. So great weekend to enjoy some time outdoors. We are in need of the rain. So coming up, I'm going to talk about the week ahead and our chances for rain in the forecast. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Overnight on the city's east side, a church burning down, leaving investigators with a lot of questions. Firefighters were called to the 4600 block of East Houston Street. That's not far from Sam Houston High School. Alicia Barrett joining us live downtown with more on if this fire is still under investigation. Alicia. Max, Sarah, good morning. Well, we know at least two fire units remain here on the scene, and that's to monitor any hot spots. And when we got to the scene, still firefighters were dealing with that. Over to the right, you can actually see some of that smoke still coming up. But this is what le this is what's left this morning of this church. Crews were initially called out here just after 11 last night, and they tell us flames could actually be seen from down the road. The fire had already expanded so quickly, forcing firefighters to fight the flames from the outside. It took some time for crews to actually be able to even contain the fire. And even now, like I mentioned, they have still been busy this morning putting out hot spots. It won't be until after that that's wrapped up that they'll be able to start going through what's left to hopefully find a cause. We know arson has, has been standing by since last night, ready to begin their part of the investigation and what we're looking at this was Huntley Park Baptist Church so it's unclear if firefighters have been able to make contact with the pastor I did uh, do some brief searches on Facebook and saw that they're an active church. The last post they had was over the summer. So we know that people do come to worship here. But again, it's unclear if firefighters at this hour have been able to contact that pastor to let them know what unfortunately pa uh, happened to this church. We'll be back in the next half hour with more information. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. A woman and teenager in critical condition this morning after police tell us a road rage incident 
ended with the shooting on the city's north side. Police tell us the drivers of two vehicles had a dispute that ended in front of the Sutton Oaks apartment complex. This is the 2800 block of I-35 North. We're told the driver of one of the vehicles pulled out a gun and started shooting, causing the other driver to crash into a gate. Police say a 38 year old woman shot in the back of the head and a 14 year old girl shot in the neck and shoulder. We also know a seven year old was in the vehicle. They were unharmed. Investigators now looking for the suspect who was last seen driving away onto I-35 in a brown colored SUV. Anyone with any information that can help police, you are urged to call the number 210-207-7273. Now to the latest on the allegations at the Children's Migrant Shelter at Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall. In a newly released letter, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services and the Texas Health and Human Services Commission lists two reports received one minute apart Tuesday morning. The first at 932 that morning, there was an allegation of some boys in the shower engaging in, quote, sexual behavior, end quote. The next minute, there was an allegation of children not getting enough to eat, accusations of lack of staff, and, quote, sexual acting out between children, end quote. There was also a concern for potential bullying of children who may be perceived as homosexual. Now, the next day on Wednesday, another report came in at 1.31 in the afternoon, alleging a lack of food, supervision, and another concern for bullying. Hours later, Governor Greg Abbott announced allegations of child sexual assault at the shelter. He also raised allegations of COVID-positive children not being separated. Yesterday, Governor Greg Abbott sent a letter to Vice President Kamala Harris calling for the shelter to be shut down. Volunteers who worked at the shelter told us the children are fed three times a day along with two snacks. Some children even saying there is too much food. Other volunteers said COVID protocols are being followed. There was also two teens who were in the shelter that spoke to the media t yesterday and shared their accounts. Bueno, según el tiempo que subimos nosotros ahí, no vimos nada malo. Now, those men, young men saying they didn't see anything bad going on at the people at the facility were treating them well. The Bear County Sheriff's Office confirmed they met with state and federal authorities to determine how the investigation will be handled. The city and the police union only have two more meetings left before Election Day to try to come up with a new police contract. Both sides met again yesterday to discuss the appeals process for fired officers, but a solution still needs to be worked out. The last meeting is scheduled for April 8, 19th, but the police union thinks it's likely the negotiations will go past that date. The time crunch comes as we near the May 1st election when voters will decide if police officers can even engage in negotiations at all. Next week, the city and police union plan to bring in experts to talk in detail, not only about the appeals process, but also about how much officers will have to pay for their health care. Taking a look at the latest COVID numbers for Bear County. At last report, 207 COVID patients now in our local hospitals. The last time we had more than 200 patients was three weeks ago. Meanwhile, 96 patients in the ICU, 27 are on ventilators. And 246 new COVID cases were confirmed. Those were from past cases. Fortunately, no new deaths were reported. And there is a troubling increase in the number of COVID cases in the United States. It comes just as one of the vaccines may soon be in short supply. ABC's Christine Sloan has the details. An alarming figure, new coronavirus cases in the country now topping 75,000, two days in a row. Pfizer now asking to extend the emergency use authorization of its vaccine to children ages 12 to 15 after the company reported it was safe and 100 percent effective. The vast majority of children are not eligible for a vaccine yet. Children need to be careful. They need to wear their mask and socially distance. The federal government sending teams and tests to hotspots around the country. Hospital admissions in Michigan have jumped more than 30 percent over the past week. It's Michigan and the Midwest today. And tomorrow or next week, it could be the Northeast or the South. States bracing, too, for a massive drop in Johnson & Johnson vaccine supplies next week. Meantime, Washington's governor is urging older people to get vaccinated. We today have over 300,000 people over the age of 65 who have not come in to get the vaccine. If you see a parent over the age of 60 that hasn't got a vaccine, 
Tell them you love them and ask them to come down and get this vaccine. Duke University announcing it will require all new and returning students to present proof of vaccination before they can enroll for the fall semester, though the school plans to accommodate medical and religious exemptions. But some places are easing restrictions. Arizona's governor signing a law exempting businesses from having to enforce local mask mandates. And in Nashville, people are no longer required to wear masks when they're outside. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Time now is 610, 67 degrees out. Well, if you deal with restless nights and groggy mornings, you might want to consider a weighted blanket. Mm. How they work? I have one. They do work. We'll tell you about that. Still ahead on GMSA. And getting ready for a food tour across Central Texas. After the break, David Elder taking us inside an iconic Mexican restaurant in today's Texas Eats preview. 67 degrees. It's Feeling a little breezy out there, just a tad bit windy when I walked in. Sarah Spivey will let us know if those hot temperatures are gone and what's happening this weekend. Now is Carlos Barajas, he's the general manager and the son out here at Guajillo's, a restaurant that's been in San Antonio since 1999, serving up delicious Mexican food. And we have a lot of stuff in front of us oh, here. Yeah. And thank it's you so much for having me out here. Uh, this smells amazing. And you said the salsa is one of the reasons why people continuously come out from all over Texas, right? Oh, Austin, we have flat attendants come in. They bring little water bottles, they, we fill it up for them. We sell it to go. <laughs> we do about a, 140 liters wow. a week of salsa. That's dining in and to go. That's incredible. You have fideo and alambre here, and then you have the pozole, but let's talk about the fideo. What makes it special? What makes it special is that when, when people come to have fideo, the minute they talk to me, they're like, hey, this reminds me of my aunts or my, my abuelita that, that's been making me fideo since I was a kid, you know? It yeah. just brings back the Mexico flavor that you, oh. you see what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Right. So when you're here with the atmosphere and you add that with a michelada, ooh. <laughs> I liked how he said people are fill, uh, come and they ask for their water, water bottles to be filled with salsa. <laughs> I ooh. like Sarah's uh, iteration. Yeah, of... I like that uh, David Elder said, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know it's good if <laughs> David Elder says, oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> All right, the weather's going to be good today, too. It is windy, though, out there right now, but the winds will be only with us temporarily, mainly in the morning hours. Uh, it's 66 degrees, clear skies, quite a dip in temperatures. Yesterday we saw a high of 95, so we're about 30 degrees cooler this morning. Nice welcome change, but again, those winds are pretty strong from the north. Steady at, 30, at an 18 miles per hour, but gusting up to 30 miles per hour. I've already seen wind gusts of up, up to 35 miles per hour this morning. A wind gust of 37 in Hondo, wind gust of 25 in New Braunfels, 23 in Tarpley. All of this wind is behind a front, which is currently uh, to the south, just to the north of Houston and to the south of Pleasanton. Wind gusts of up to uh, 32 miles per hour in Rock Springs. So again, a very windy start to the day. But today we're actually going to see those wind gusts a taper off in the afternoon through about lunch. We could see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. But in the afternoon, our winds will calm down. And so if you're particularly worried about the wind, let's say you want to get in a round of golf today, I would the better conditions are going to be in the afternoon rather than in the morning. But of course, those early tea times, at least you'll have the sun. Uh, now, as far as humidity goes, uh, we are seeing humidity fall behind this front as well. Dew points are in the 30s and 40s. That's some pleasantly dry air. Temperatures not too much cooler behind the front, but again, a welcome change from yesterday's highs in the triple digits out toward Del Rio and in the mid 90s here in San Antonio. We're even starting to see some folks in the 50s like up in Kerrville and in Rock Springs. In a wider view, you can really see the cold core of air. It's in the 30s this morning in the Panhandle, Texas. 38 degrees in Amarillo and in Lubbock. All of the rain around this front is to the east of uh, areas in Texas out toward Louisiana. The Gulf Coast states there actually under tornado watches early this morning. Uh, we just didn't have enough uh, ingredients to produce any rain from this system yesterday in San Antonio. And instead, what we're 
seeing is a ridge of high pressure moving into place. Uh, high pressure, low pre uh, that low pressure system is moving off to the east. And in its wake, we're going to have sunny, beautiful weather today. Nice low humidity and temperatures will be 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. High temperature in the 80s around San Antonio, upper 70s in parts of the hill country, closer to 90 degrees in Del Rio and Laredo and Catula. But again, a welcome change there. Yesterday, Del Rio's high temperature was 103. So I'll take 90 degrees over 103 any day. Now again, just to reiterate today, windy this morning, gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. But into the afternoon, our main weather is just going to be low humidity, sunny, not as breezy. 84 for the high in San Antonio. A great day to have some uh, lunch weekend lunch outside. Again, it will be pretty breezy in the morning, but but nice all together. Now we do need rain. We need rain. There are areas in our viewing area that have extreme drought, even exceptional drought down toward Laredo. But in the week ahead, our rain chances, we will have rain chances every day. They're just going to be low rain chances every day. One or two pop up showers or storms are possible, but the chance for rain only 20% just about every day of the upcoming week. Keep in mind that we are going to see another front on Tuesday, and that's going to drop our high temperatures even more. We'll be back down into the 70s for the highs uh, throughout the rest of the week. So a nice welcome change as far as temperatures go. I just wish we could squeeze out more rain in that forecast. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 619, 67 degrees out. Well, if you're craving something a little sweet, still ahead when you can head out to Poteet for its annual Strawberry Festival. Plus, popular product helping a lot of people get much needed rest. After the break, we're going to break down weighted blankets. Weighted blankets. The claim is they calm anxiety, help insomnia, or even feel like a hug. So what is a weighted blanket? Basically, a weighted blanket is a quilted blanket that each of these little pockets is filled with glass or plastic beads. And the pocket keeps the weights from shifting around while you're sleeping. Some find the weight comforting. They've even been used for years for kids with autism. Sales have been booming, so do they help? Sleep expert Dr. Faraya Abbasi Feinberg says there isn't a lot of evidence-based research on whether they work, but her patients like them. I do recommend weighted blankets for some of my patients that struggle with sleep, especially if they feel very restless, and the feedback has been positive. Weighted blankets are not all the same. Manufacturers say you should pick one that's around 10% of your body weight. So does all this extra weight add heat? Well, that depends on the individual, but tests show it adds about as much warmth as a down comforter. There are other ways to improve sleep. Sleep experts recommend avoiding caffeine at night and avoid reading or watching anything agitating. And avoid forcing yourself to go to bed when your body's not ready for bed yet. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Max isn't a fan. I feel suffocating. You it's know fine. what? If you're a hot sleeper, maybe not, but I like mine. I like that. Not every day, hot though. Hot sleeper. All right, 623, 67 degrees out. Well, taking a bite out of fresh Texas strawberries mm. just ahead where you can pick your own at a popular festival just outside of San Antonio. Welcome back. If you're looking for something to do with the family or just craving some fresh fruit, we know the perfect place for you to go. We are talking about the Petite Strawberry Festival. It is back after being canceled last year because of the pandemic. Farmers hoping to see a big turnout helping them to recover from last year. The festival kicked off yesterday, continues today at 10 a.m. We have all the info on KSAT.com. Big shouts to Alicia Brea. She did a story with them this week brought back some strawberries and they are delicious. Mm. I will say she brought all like top five ribbon winners. There you go. So, you know, we had the best of the best. But if you have nothing to do today, Sarah Spivey says the weather is looking good. Sunny, should be good to go. We're gonna check with Sarah Spivey in a little bit. Time now is 627, 67 degrees out. We're well, still ahead in the next half hour, shining a spotlight on a teacher who has stepped up and found creative and safe ways to connect with students. Whoa. Plus, stolen cars across major Texas cities where officials say they are ending up and the impact they're having on South Texas towing companies. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 631 this Saturday, April 10th. We are running through April, but this weekend, my weekend, yesterday, Thursday, our only days off, felt like middle of July. It was, it was pretty warm, you know, but we can't complain. No. 
Um, but this weekend, Sarah mm. Spivey, you're saying things will cool off. Yeah, it was so warm the last couple of days. You really couldn't get out too much in the afternoon and do outdoor activities because the heat was so high. Uh, but today and throughout the weekend, it's going to be nice for outdoor activities. So Fido's forecast, if you want to walk the dog, you got the green paw to walk the dog because temperatures will be just fine enough for you and your pups. In fact, will uh, be windy this morning with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. And in the afternoon, we'll only be in the 80s for the highs rather than the 90s. And even there were some areas with triple digits yesterday, especially out west toward Del Rio. Speaking of windy conditions, boys at windy gusts up to 37 miles per hour in Hondo, up to 30 miles per hour here in San Antonio, all behind this cold front. And it's not going to get cold, but it is going to be a lot cooler than it was yesterday and in fact uh, it's going to be nice and dry too. Dew points will be in the 30s and 40s throughout the day today. Uh, now this is good news for wanting to get outside and enjoy outdoor activities this weekend but the drier air coming in is going to limit our rain chance. We have no rain chances this weekend unfortunately but in the week ahead there are a couple of opportunities to see some rain so I'll walk you through that forecast coming up in just a few minutes but beautiful weather this weekend, Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. A church on the city's east side reduced to ash. Fire crews have remained in the 4600 block of East Houston since 11 last night, where they say flames quickly overtook the building. Our Alicia Beretta is live from the scene. Alicia, do firefighters know when they'll be able to start their arson investigation? Well, not until the scene is fully under control. And the issue with that is that they're still dealing with some hot spots this morning. So right now that's under control. They're just looking around assessing. They are going to be re remaining here just to monitor the scene. But just take a look at how bad the damage is. You can't even make out what this building was. Uh, this is what's left of the Huntley Park Baptist Church a collapsed building reduced to charred wood. When fire crews first arrive, again, that was around 11 last night, they tell us flames could be seen from a distance as the fire quickly took over the building. One of the biggest challenges for firefighters was due to the A-frame size of the church. We spoke to the fire department's public information officer, that's Woody Woodward, before things got this bad. But he says that's the reason they couldn't go inside. It wasn't safe due to the, due to the structure type and, of course, those heavy flames. There's still some extremely um, dangerous spots in the center of the, the main, what I believe to be the sanctuary of the church. It's hard to tell right now. So the good news, there aren't any report of injuries or that anyone was even inside at the time of the fire. And firefighters do admit that it's going to take some time until they can finally go in and really start assessing the damage, get an estimate of those damages, and of course, uh, find a cause. And another thing to note, we know arson is standing by as well to start their investigation, and really that's not going to start until the sun comes up. Reporting live from the city's east side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. San Antonio police now asking for your help this morning, finding a group of people who attacked a 50 year old man outside a local grocery store. Police tell us they were called out to Ruiz Street near the intersection of Colorado yesterday after they say a man got into an argument with a customer inside the store. Officers say that customer left, gathered up his friends, waited for the 50 year old man to leave the store before ambushing him and beating him. We now know the victim is in serious condition in the hospital. Police say the main suspect took off in a black suburban. The Bear County Sheriff's Department continues their search for a man accused of shooting his own sister. It's been 22 hours since deputies first responded to a home on Grapevine Street on the west side of the county. Investigators say an argument escalated to the man firing a gun and grazing his sister's shoulder yesterday morning. There is still no word on what that argument was over. And a local mother opening up for the first time since the murder of her 20 year old son. She says she still has no answers and she feels like her son's death has been forgotten. Joe Soto was killed while leaving a party in the 4000 block of Moss Spring four years ago. Genevieve Rubio, Joe's mother, says her son always had a smile on his face and had a bright future ahead for him. But her son's murder still remains unsolved. Rubio, the mother, now saying she hopes as time passes, someone will come forward to help out. I need somebody to come forward. If anybody knows something out there, please come forward. I beg you all to come forward. 
If anyone has information that can lead to an arrest, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-7867. Well, towing companies in rural counties on the South Texas border are busy trailing behind law enforcement agencies that are investigating human smuggling cases. These companies are seeing a wide variety of cases. One company we spoke with says they are hauling 50 vehicles a week and about half of the time the vehicles are wrecked. The Zavala County says the lot of the vehicle, a lot of the vehicles were stolen from major cities across Texas are being used to smuggle people. Many of them have been involved in chases and drivers are are reckless. In March, 69 vehicles recovered were either stolen or involved in bailouts where all the occupants jumped out of the vehicle when officers tried to pull them over. The U.S. Supreme Court is once again siding with religious worshipers over health regulations. Its 5-4 to four decision this week allows California Bible study and prayer groups to exceed the limits of coronavirus restrictions. The ruling follows other decisions to allow religious services to proceed. The majority opinion notes if hair salons and stores can hold more than three households at a time, prayer groups should be able to do the same. And President Joe Biden releasing a $1.5 trillion wish list for his first federal budget. In the wish list, he asked for substantial gains for Democratic priorities like education, health care, housing, and environmental protection. The request by the White House Budget Office spells out Biden's top priorities as Congress weighs its spending plans for next year. China fines e-commerce giant Alibaba $2.7 billion, state-run media reports. The Chinese administration for market regulation imposed the penalty yesterday for, quote, monopoly conduct. It adds that investigations found Alibaba Group had implemented an exclusive dealing agreement. The total fine is equivalent to only 4% of Alibaba's sales in China in 2019. And time now is 638, 67 degrees out. Still ahead, lowering the age of one of the COVID-19 vaccines. Why Pfizer says children between the ages of 12 to 15 should be able to get their shot. And this is your story, right? Yeah. Go for it. Well, there's a local music teacher who was nominated for the Grammys more than once. Whoa. We'll tell you about how creative he is. We'll introduce you to Matthew Trevino next on GMSA. And before we head to break, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. Yesterday was a scorcher, so what is the rest of today? What does this weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back. Teachers have stepped up and found creative, safe ways to connect with students this past year, and there are true heroes. That's true. Our hard work of one local music teacher at NEISD's Rowan Forest Elementary has not gone unnoticed. So this morning we're introducing you to the music teacher Matthew Trevino, who was nominated by the Grammys for his creative way of teaching music. The cool thing is this instrument plays in lots of different styles. NEISD's Row on Forest Elementary School music teacher Matthew Trevino goes above and beyond when it comes to teaching music to his students. So you could do the old big band swing. His passion for teaching music has been even recognized by the Recording Academy's Grammy Awards. Trevino was nominated for teaching music this year, his third nomination in the past four years. Waking up and getting to, to make music with these awesome young little musicians is just the coolest thing. Was an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how she swallowed a cow. He has had to find creative ways to teach music during the pandemic, so he put up a green screen in his classroom and learned how to edit videos. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll cry. But even before the pandemic, Trevino always starts class with dance. He says even if you're not a musical person, dancing to music is a way for all people to connect. That social aspect, whenever whenever we we uh, we dance via Zoom or in person, I mean, it's just that chance for us to connect. Between Trevino's fun dancing videos and teaching students about pitch or musical instruments, he says it's the journey of watching his students discover something that they didn't know was special to them. That makes all the work worth it. They walk in the hallway and they'll say, like, oh, this is my favorite place to be. Or like when we open the car doors for them in the morning, they're like, oh, it's my music day. I'm so happy. You know, that sort of thing. It's just 
really special. <laughs> she cried, of course. Whee! Hope you enjoyed the story. Well, Trevino has been an elementary school music teacher for 11 years now. He start, When he started at Rowan Forest Elementary in 2016, he started the music group called Sonidos. It's a group of fourth and fifth grade students who play on the xylophones and one of the students on the piano and another on the drums. And get this, Sonidos has played at several Spurs games at the Tobin Theater and even selected to perform at the National Teacher Convention. This is amazing. I, I When I was interviewing him and he was showing me all of uh, the different videos and stuff. I was like, can I take your music class? This sounds like so much fun. It's so it impressive. It really does. We should start every morning with dance. Loosen oh, we up. already do. Sarah. I know. You know that that's the well, case. some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hey, Max. guys, yesterday, were you outside in the afternoon at all? Tried not to be. Yeah, and this is the reason why. Look at these high temperatures yesterday. In San Antonio, we got up to 95 degrees, which is 16 degrees above our average of 79. But look out toward Del Rio, 103 degrees for the high in Del Rio. That broke a record. 102 in Carrizo Springs, 104 in Catula, and 102 in Laredo. Why am I showing you this? Well, because I want to show you that it's going to be cooler today, about 10 to 15 degrees cooler today uh, than it was yesterday, all because of a cool front that moved through. And it has cooled down nicely this morning. It's 67 in Del Rio. That's down from that 103 degrees from yesterday. Uh, 65 in New Braunfels, 66 in Hondo, already in the 50s in Kerrville and in Rock Springs, 66 in San Antonio. But it is very breezy. You step outside, you notice the winds. Winds are gusting up to 30 to 30. 35 miles per hour in places, a wind gust of 37 in Hondo and a wind gust of 30 miles per hour recorded in San Antonio. This is behind that front, which has moved through and behind it, we've got drier air as well. Now it is going to be breezy through lunch. Around lunch, we'll still see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. But in the afternoon, those winds will calm down and by the evening, we'll really only be seeing a northeast breeze at about five miles per hour. So today, a beautiful Saturday and a lot more comfortable outside than yesterday. Tons of sunshine all day long. Again, windy in the morning. We'll be warming up to 76 around noon, 84 for the afternoon high temperature. Sun will set around 754, 758, and then we'll be cooling down with temperatures falling into the 60s by midnight. And again, windy to start, but not as windy in the afternoon. Now, in our weather pattern, you can see where that front is. You can see how dry it is around Texas, but there are still plenty of thunderstorms uh, out just to the east of the Mississippi River. In fact, these uh boxes here that are the reds. Those are tornado watch boxes that extend all the way from Louisiana to the panhandle of Florida. That's where the main focus for uh, severe weather is going to be today. And in the wake of this cold front, a high pressure system is going to settle over Texas. High means dry and low humidity and sunny skies. So that drier air is moving in. We're going to have low humidity all weekend long, and it is going to be a beautiful weekend with that high pressure system dominant. Tomorrow morning, it'll actually be very cool. We'll be waking up in the low to mid 50s and then in the afternoon tomorrow with plenty of sunshine we will be warming up into the upper 80s for the high temperature. So just a little bit warmer tomorrow, but not humid. And so it'll still feel pretty great tomorrow for your weekend. Unfortunately, that high pressure system is going to keep out our rain chances this weekend and we desperately need the rain. This is a look at the precipitation deficit over the past 365 days for the past year, a precipitation deficit of about 20 inches around San Antonio. What that means is that we should have 20 more inches of rain than we do uh, out there right now. In the past year, we've really been struggling to see decent rainfall and over the next few days into the week, we're really only going to have about a chance for isolated rain. It'll be a chance for isolated rain every day, but we're not going to have any big washout rainfalls around San Antonio, unfortunately. But we will keep you updated. Hopefully we'll be able to see that 20% chance for isolated rain go up a little bit. Uh, but but of course, we'll keep the forecast updated. Another thing that's going to happen, cool front will arrive on Tuesday. That'll keep our highs in the upper 70s, so even cooler uh, than this weekend. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 649, 68 degrees out.
Well, coming up in your health headlines, a new study on children who are hospitalized with coronavirus details on the challenges children can face with chronic condi conditions. And take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, two, six, fireball zero. Daily four, four, eight, seven, nine, fireball two. Cash five, one, four, 10, 19, 22. And Mega Millions, 22, 26, 27, 58, 66. Mega Ball 12, Mega Plier 2. Ooh, I need to check my ticket. As more children are hospitalized with COVID, a medical journey says boys and kids with chronic conditions, they are at the highest risk. According to JAMA Network Open, 84% of pediatric patients admitted to the ICU had one or more chronic conditions. 58% of patients requiring a mechanical ventilator to breathe were male. The authors point out that one of the challenges to this research is that multi-system inflammatory syndrome does not have a diagnostic code. Pfizer asking the FDA to expand the use of its COVID-19 vaccine to children ages 12 to 15 years old. Under the current emergency use authorization, the Pfizer vaccine is available only for people age 16 and older. Based on a phase three clinical trial in adolescents 12 to 15 years old, Pfizer says the vaccine is showing 100% efficacy. Well, Dr. Anthony Fauci says it will most likely be the end of summer when the majority of us will be vaccinated. So if you're still waiting your turn to get your vaccine, did you know that there's some foods that can actually protect you in the meantime? Our Ursula Perry explains. Over the years, green tea's been shown to improve blood flow, lower cholesterol, and prevent a variety of heart-related problems. But did you know that most recently, it's been shown to possibly help ward off COVID-19 too? Researchers at North Carolina University have found that green tea contains flavonoids. They have antiviral capabilities. Antivirals work by attaching to an enzyme in the virus and inhibiting the virus from replicating. It stops the replication process, so the virus cannot produce new genomes that then can be packaged into new viral particles. In the study, the chemical compounds in green tea have been found to weaken spike proteins that give COVID the power to infect and spread. Dark chocolate and grapes are found to do the same thing. But scientists and doctors are urging the most effective way to prevent COVID-19 is by getting the vaccine as soon as you are able to. When they vaccinate, it's not just about them, but it's also about the people um, very close to them. A word of warning, the researchers from the North Carolina study said that drinking milk with your green tea, grapes and dark chocolate actually could lessen the effects of those antiviral properties that you're looking for. Another study out of Europe, by the way, noted that those who die of COVID-19 usually have a vitamin K deficiency. That means you probably should eat all the greens and grains you can, they're full of vitamin K. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. Time now is 6.55, 66 degrees out. Well, after the break, we'll tell you the news you need to know before you go. For hours, firefighters have remained on the city's east side to fully put out the flames that affected this church on the 4600 block of East Houston Street. That's Hunt Lake Park Baptist Church. Crews were initially called out here just after 11 last night, and they tell us flames could be seen from a distance, and the fire had already expanded so quickly that it forced firefighters to fight those flames from the outside. It's taken some time for crews to contain the fire, and even now they are busy putting out those hot spots and it won't be until after they've wrapped up with that that they'll actually be able to uh, make it through comb through what's left of this church to try to find a cause. We know arson is standing by to begin their investigation. Uh, we did speak to the public information officer for the San Antonio Fire Department and at this hour there's just so much mess. They don't have a cause. They don't suspect anything at this point. We know CPS crews were also on the scene to to cut out that electricity. Reporting from the city's east side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It's windy out there this morning, but in the afternoon, the winds will calm down. Temperatures this weekend going to be in the 80s, so cooler than the last couple of days. In the week ahead, only a small chance for rain and another cool front arrives on Tuesday. See you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Converse police investigating a shooting after finding a man with a gunshot wound right in the middle of the street. We explain what police know so far. 
And Governor Greg Abbott is asking the vice president to close down the children's migrant shelter at Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall after some disturbing allegations. We have the latest on those reports. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City to start your weekend. 63 degrees this morning. Yesterday was hot, hot, hot. What does the rest of the day look like? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Saturday, April 10th. Did you make it outside at all yesterday? No, because it was hot, 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 hot. I liked I it. I liked that. There you go. We liked to have fun this morning. I made it out, got burnt on the neck, but it was well worth it. No sunscreen, Max. On the face. I saw oh, no. no touching yeah. the face. Always on right hair. here so you don't get the wrinkles. Mm, mm. They're coming in. Oh, yeah, I know. They're Can't stop out. them. I saw you playing golf yesterday, Max. You I would a say good swing. I'm trying to play golf. Got to prep for next year's Masters. Absolutely. It is a little windy out there, though, this morning for any of you who have early tea times outside this weekend. I did want to start off the forecast by just showing a beautiful picture of the blue bonnets yesterday. Even though, yes, it was very hot yesterday, this is a great picture right around sunset up in Johnson City, so north of Blanco in the Hill Country. A gorgeous picture there. You can send in your pictures to our KSAT Connect app. Uh, on our weather app rather. Now it is breezy out there. Wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour currently, but I have seen some wind gust readings of up to 35 miles per hour this morning. Very windy behind a cool front that has moved through. You can notice that out there this morning and it's a lot cooler too. Temperatures are not necessarily cold, but nice and cool. 61 degrees at the airport, 55 in Comfort, 54 in Kerrville, 57 in Bandera. A nice cool down from yesterday's high temperatures in the 90s and even in the triple digits in many places. So today it's going to be windy throughout the morning with gusts up to 30 miles per hour. But in the afternoon, we're actually going to see those winds die down quite a bit and it'll be pretty nice outside 84 for the high. A welcome change from yesterday's heat. It's going to be warm today, but not too hot. And with low humidity, we'll cool down in the evenings pretty nicely as well. Tomorrow's weather for the rest of the weekend looks great too, but we are in desperate need of rainfall. I'll show you those rain chances coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, Converse police are trying to figure out what happened to a man who was found with a gunshot wound in the middle of the street. It happened around 10 o'clock last night. Converse police say a person saw the man unresponsive lying outside his car on FM 78 under the overpass of 1604. Officers say when they arrived, they saw the man had two gunshot wounds to the chest. He was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Police tell us they were they will be releasing more information later this morning. In the top stories we were following this morning, a woman and teenager in critical condition after a road rage incident ended on a shooting on the city's northeast side. Police tell us the drivers of two vehicles had a dispute that ended up in front of the Sutton Oaks apartment complex in the 2800 block of I-35 North. We're told the driver of one of the vehicles pulled out a gun and started shooting, causing the other driver to crash into a gate. Officers tell us a 38-year-old woman shot in the back of the head and a 14-year-old girl shot in the neck and shoulder. There was also a seven-year-old in the vehicle as well. They are unharmed. Police still searching for the suspect. If you have any information, you're asked to call 210-207-7273. Well, now to the latest on the allegations at the Children's Migrant Shelter at the Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall. In a letter released yesterday, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services and the Texas Health and Human Services Commission lists three reports received earlier this week. The first one coming in on Tuesday at 932. There was an allegation of some of the boys in the shower engaging in, quote, sexual behavior, end quote. The next minute, there was an allegation of lack of staff, children not getting enough to eat, and, quote, sexual acting out between children, end quote. There was also a concern for potential bullying of children who may be perceived as homosexual. And the next day, another report came in at 1.31 in the afternoon, alleging a lack of food, supervision, and bullying. Hours later, Governor Greg Abbott announced allegations of child sexual assault at the shelter and children with COVID-19 not being separated. Well, yesterday, the Bear County Sheriff's Office confirmed they met with state and federal authorities to determine how the investigations will be handled. And Governor Greg Abbott sending a letter to Vice President Kamala Harris asking for the shelter to be shut down. 
Here at home, we continue to see a small increase in COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals. The city announcing 207 people have been hospitalized in Bear County. There are 96 people in the ICU and 27 are on ventilators. The city says there are 246 new coronavirus cases. Luckily, there have been no new deaths. And WellMed opening up more than 3,000 appointments for COVID-19 vaccines next week. Online registration is now officially open for the Johnson Johnson vaccine at the Doris Griffin Senior One Stop Center. The center located at 6157 Northwest Loop 410. Those interested have to get their vaccine on Monday or Tuesday. The clinic will be open from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. both Monday and Tuesday. To register, just visit WellMed's website. We also have all this information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And happening in New Braunfels this afternoon, two businesses stepping up to help support the hungry. The benefit starts at noon today, and all donations will provide meals from the New Braunfels Food Bank. That's right. Alicia Barrera joining us live from the Pillars Christian Learning Center with more on today's event. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, a little windy, a little chilly, but that's okay because the staff here at the Pillars Christian Learning Center have showed up early because they're setting up. The event starts at noon, but we want to get with an expert who's helped plan all this. This is Garen Anderson, CEO of the Learning Center. So today there's something for everyone. This is a very family friendly event. Yeah, it is. That's exactly what we try to do. And uh, the Pillars Christian Learning Center and Fry Height Country Store, it's just catty corner to us. Anybody, we're, we're fairly new to the New Braunfels community, but everybody knows who Fry Height Country Store is. Um, you know, we're going to have great food, live music. We're going to have an after Easter Easter egg hunt with 4,000 Easter eggs stuffed with goodies for the kids. Uh, we're going to have about 25 vendors uh, that uh, you can shop. And then we're going to have a bunch of other activities for the smaller kids, cone ice, chicken poop bingo. You heard me right. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have something for everybody. It's going to be a blast. It's all for a great cause. The entry is free, no cost to get in, but we are going to ask you to have a good time and open up your pocketbooks for a good cause for the New Braunfels Food Bank. And that's right. We have actually, you can see some of the donations that they've already been able to gather. So we're going to be sticking around here all morning long. And you guys at 830, Max and Sarah, um, Garrett over here mentioned a chicken poop bingo. Yes, you heard it right. It is literally what it sounds. And we'll have that for you in the next half hour. Reporting live from New Braunfels, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Alicia. Time now is 8.07, 63 degrees out. Well, we have heard about drinking margaritas or whiskey on the rocks. But what about your guac? Whoa. We'll tell you more still ahead. And there is a new season of our online streaming show, KSAT Explains. Next on GMSA, we have a preview of the newest episode that is available for you to watch right now. See the wind blowing, Alicia, out there. 63 degrees, a cooler start today. Yesterday's temperatures were really high. Sarah Spivey will give us our weekend forecast when we come back. KSAT explains his return for another season. The online streaming show is back, diving into the stories, making headlines in order to give you a deeper explanation and more context. Meyer Arthur shares a little insight into how the team chose the first topic for the premiere episode of season four. Mid-February 2021, here's what we know. It was freezing, below freezing, actually. There was snow and then there was ice. And then the power went out and then went the water. Now, you know that the power outages were linked to those extreme cold temperatures because of those so-called rolling blackouts and the water problems were related to that, too. But what exactly happened? What caused the massive failure of the Texas power grid? Why were we all four minutes and 37 seconds away from a blackout that could have lasted months? That's what we're tackling in this latest episode of KSAT Explains. We're explaining what ERCOT does, how it operates, its relationship with CPS Energy, why Texas is the only state in the country to be on its very own power grid, and why power generators in the state don't have to make sure that their equipment can stand up to extreme winter weather. Because we know the snow and ice that we saw in February will come around again. And it may not be decades before we see that. And when the time comes, we don't know if millions of Texans will be left again without power and water. But you won't be in the dark when it comes to understanding the Texas power system. 
Check out this latest episode of KSAT Explains on KSAT.com slash explains or the KSAT TV app. And Sarah, you were saying you and Katie Blake also make an appearance in this episode. We do because we wanted to, to just go over how uh, extreme the cold weather was and talk about how stressed the power grid was because of the extreme cold weather and that elongated period below freezing here in San Antonio. We also wanted to talk a little bit about the polar vortex, what that is and why we got some cold weather. And we briefly touch on the potential changes in the climate and whether or not that would have an effect on cold weather in the future. So check it out. It's a really great episode that we worked pretty hard on. No cold today, though. <laughs> forecast that's for sure yesterday we were in the 90s here in san antonio the last couple days we've been in the 90s and del rio got up to 103 degrees but outside right now it is a cool 61 and we're also seeing wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour in some places you'll notice on the horizon a little bit of a haze too there might be some west texas dust out there today but i just checked the air quality air quality is fine just wanted to to let you know about that but again the winds are the big story out there this morning. Wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, and I have seen wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour earlier this morning. It is very windy out there. Just be prepared if you have early Saturday morning plans outside uh, with the winds. Winds everywhere are gusting up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour, all behind a cool front that has moved through and is pushing closer and closer to the Rio Grande Valley. And meanwhile, if you're worried about the wind conditions today, perhaps you want to get in a round of golf or just be outside and don't want to be worried too much about your hair. Uh, the wind gusts will start to uh, die down in the afternoon. In the afternoon, it'll still be breezy, but we'll be talking about winds of about 10 to 15 miles per hour rather than gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Much drier air is working its way in behind that front as well. Dew points are falling into the 30s and 40s. Really comfortable, low humidity today. And as I mentioned, it's not too much cooler behind this front, but it is pleasantly dry and cool in the hill country 54 degrees in Kerrville 52 in Rock Springs 64 in Del Rio 63 in Gonzales 66 in Pleasanton and 61 here in San Antonio you can really see the cold air up in the hill country a uh, part of me up in the panhandle of Texas where temperatures have fallen into the 30s in Amarillo and in Lubbock any rain with this system is well to our east and there are parts of the country that are going to have to deal with severe weather again tornado watches in the panhandle of Florida and in southern parts of Alabama, but here in San Antonio, high pressure is going to be our friend this weekend, settling over, making sunny, low humidity weather all weekend long. And today, in the wake of that cold front, we're going to be quite a bit cooler than yesterday for our high temperatures. Now, it's still going to be warm, but 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday's highs. We'll be at 84 in San Antonio, upper 70s in Kerrville, 90 for Del Rio, which, yes, is warm, but they were at 103 yesterday. So, again, quite a bit cooler than yesterday. Windy this morning, 68 degrees. Just to go over this again for you in the afternoon, that's when we'll see our winds die down quite a bit. We'll be at 76 at noon, 84 for the high, and some will set tonight at 758. We need the rain. Even though the high pressure system is going to make the weather beautiful today, it's going to keep out our rain chances in the next couple of days. Look at the uh, extreme drought in these areas of red and, and severe drought for areas in San Antonio, even exceptional drought in Laredo. But over the next few days, uh, our rain chances this week, there's going to be rain chances every day this week. They're just going to be low rain chances every day this week. 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm in the week ahead. So no real significant rain chances. But if you do get a shower or an isolated storm, uh, that is a possibility this week. Another cool front arriving Tuesday morning, and that'll allow our temperatures to cool down even further. Highs near 80 degrees and in the 70s for the remainder of this next week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 817, 63 degrees out. Tomorrow's National Pet Day. Whoa. We need to plan a party. Still ahead, we tell you the perfect way you can celebrate your best friend. And it is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats next on GMSA, a preview of the latest episode. Mm, sushi. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Time to get ready for a food tour across Central Texas with David Elder on Texas Eats today at 10 a.m. here on KSAT 12. And of course, 
streaming on KSAT TV. Okay, so in this clip from today's show, David Elder takes us inside an elevated sushi restaurant on the northwest side of San Antonio near La Cantera. Looks amazing. Talk to me about this one right here. It's got a little like pepper on top, got some sauce on there. I'm gonna eat it, but talk to me about it. What's going on? Yeah. That's their select roll. They have um, gelatin, salmon, inside have a uh, fried shrimp. <laughs> it's good, yeah, you can taste um, it. Avocado and kanikama. There are a ton of different rolls on the menu, and every time you come out here, the presentation is gonna change. So it makes it fun and interesting. This one was on fire, which uh, it was a really cool display. I love that. Uh, talk to me what makes this one special. What's inside of it? That's uh, our, our number one roll. Okay. It's uh, two kings because it have a king salmon and the king scallops. Scallops? A scallops on top. Mm -hmm. So is it kind of like a, like the scallops are in a sauce? Is it, is it baked they're, at all? Or? They're baked, uh-huh. And talking about food, do you smell what The Rock is cooking? No, what's he cooking, Max? Okay, well, apparently it's guac. Okay, so Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his tequila brand have launched Guac on The Rock. Oh, okay. All right, their mission is to encourage people to support local restaurants from May 1st through the 5th. The tequila will reimburse diners for their guacamole purchase. Okay, the guac must be purchased with a, I believe it's called a Terramana cocktail to qualify. And Terramana is the name of his new tequila. Have You like tequila, have you had it? Love tequila, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I wanna try his, uh, also Elon Musk had one, and my girlfriend was telling me one of the Kardashians started a tequila. Of course they have tequila. Yeah. Oh, I think, sorry, I think it's one of the Jenners. Oh, Kendall, Kendall. Kendall Jenner. Gabby, our producer, confirmed. Thank you. All right. So now is 822, 63 degrees out. They're also really expensive. Yeah, that's how they make money, Max. <laughs> all right. Do you know you can get paid to eat? Max, listen up. Still ahead in our next oh. half hour, we tell you all the details on how you can get paid to test hot dogs. Well, for pet owners, every day feels like National Pet Day, of course. But tomorrow... It's official. That's right. So it is time to pay extra special attention to your best friend, maybe with a treat or maybe a nice play day. So we want to see your pets. Send us Ow. your pet pics right now. <laughs> and Sarah will give you all of the sound effects for it. You just, I, you know, when you see a cute little animal, you just go. Is that a rabbit? It's a rabbit. So Aww. cute. So we might feature some of those pictures you send in tomorrow on GMSA. You can send us your submission on the KSAC Connect app or our social media pages. Max, you've got to get a pet. Even if it's a fish, come on. Okay. Oh, if I can. Mm -hmm. We don't have a KSAT Connect app, so Ooh. you'll have to send that through the KSAT Connect feature on the weather on the app. weather app. Yeah. Or you can go to ksat.com slash pins. ksat.com slash pins. Yep. P I N S. Send us your pet pics. All right. 827, 63 degrees out. Well, week two of. The Chauvin's, Chauvin's trial is over, and the medical examiner on the stand testifying about how Floyd died. We have a wrap of week two next on GMSA. A benefit to help those in need is happening this afternoon in New Braunfels, and we have all the details. It's a family-friendly event, so there's events for adults and for the children. Stick here with us on GMSA. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 8.30 this morning, Saturday, April 10th. We keep harping on it. Yesterday felt more like August than it did April. What is this? That's my hot, 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 hot dance. Oh, okay. <laughs> on that note, Sarah Spivey, please take Can't it away. Can't do that today yeah. though, Sarah. No. no. <laughs> Can't really do that any day, to be fair. What's wrong with my hot, hot, hot dance? It's all right, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be significantly cooler than yesterday, but still pleasant outside. Temperatures will be in the 80s rather than in the 90s and triple digits. So I know yesterday it was a little too warm in the afternoon to really enjoy some good time outdoors. So today, if you want to take your dog for a walk, though, you got the green paw just about every hour. It is windy out there right now. Uh, but we are going to see those winds calm down in the afternoon. It'll be nice and warm.
warm this afternoon with a high temperature near 84. But thank goodness we're not going to have to deal with those 90s. Now, temperatures outside are nice and cool. It's 61 degrees at the airport, 56 in Kerrville, 52 in Rock Springs, 64 in Del Rio. Quite the improvement in Del Rio. They saw a high temperature of 103 yesterday, so down quite a bit by 40 degrees to start the day. With winds from the north gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, all behind that cool front which has moved through. Uh, and I have seen readings of up to about 35 mile per hour wind gusts. So it is going to be windy this morning with again low humidity today and a high temperature in the 80s. Tomorrow we'll be starting off quite a bit cooler in the 50s, and it'll be a nice day as well. So we'll make up for the toasty temperatures over the next couple of days with nice outdoors weather uh, both uh, today and tomorrow throughout your weekend. Now in the week ahead, we do have some chances for rain. I'm hoping we can see a little bit of rain in San Antonio, so I will go ahead and uh, detail the forecast for you for next week coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, fire crews working for hours at a fire at a church on the city's east side. Right now, we know it started just after 11 last night at the Huntley Park Baptist Church. Firefighters on the scene telling us when they arrived, the fire had already expanded and it's done so quickly. They say it took several hours for fire crews to contain the fire and put out all the hot spots. As of now, crews not exactly sure what caused the church to burn down, but arson investigators were called out to figure that out. CPS crews also on the scene to cut out all the electricity. In your top stories today, a San Antonio police officer is indicted on charges of assault and official oppression. Police say Marshall Shepard was responding to a call of a man standing in front of traffic on the northeast side back in May last year. They say Shepard fire stun gun but was unsuccessful, so he hit the man in the face multiple times and fired the stun gun again. According to the arrest report, police say the use of force was necessary because the man was not compliant. Marshall turned himself over to authorities and he is currently suspended without pay. And San Antonio police searching for a group who attacked a man outside a grocery store in the city's west side. Right now, we're told it happened on Ruiz Street near the intersection of Colorado. Police say the 50 year old man got into an argument with a customer inside the store. They say the customer left the store, gathered up his friends and waited for the man to leave. Investigators say they beat him and left him with a cut on his head. He was taken to the hospital and last check in serious condition. Police say the main suspect took off in a black suburban. In your morning headlines, the latest on the Derek Chauvin trial. Week two of testimony wrapping up with a medical examiner on the stand revealing critical details about how George Floyd died. ABC's Rena Rory has more from Min Minneapolis. Week two in the closely watched murder trial of Derek Chauvin ending with a bang. Jurors hearing highly anticipated testimony from Dr. Andrew Baker, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner who performed George Floyd's autopsy, saying his body just couldn't handle the restraint from officers. The, the law enforcement subdual restraint and the neck compression was just more than Mr. Floyd could take by virtue of that, those heart conditions. The prosecution hoping to convince the jury it was Chauvin's knee that killed Floyd. But the defense says those heart problems and Floyd's drug use ultimately led to his death. And so in your opinion, uh, both uh, the heart disease as well as the history of hypertension and the drug, uh, the drugs that were in his system played a role in Mr. Floyd's death. In my opinion, yes. Other key medical experts also taking the stand, including pathologist Dr. Lindsay Thomas. There's no evidence to suggest he would have died that night, except for the interactions with law enforcement. The jury shown these 3D images as breathing and lung expert Dr. Martin Tobin asked them to feel their own necks. This is your windpipe here explaining how Chauvin's actions made it impossible for Floyd to breathe, with Floyd's body pressed against the pavement, handcuffs on in the prone position, and Chauvin's knee on his neck, back, torso, and arm. The cause of death is a low level of oxygen. Eleven current and former law enforcement officials testified against Chauvin this week, including use of force expert Jody Steiger of the LAPD, saying he should have reduced restraint and given medical aid once not Floyd was cuffed on the ground. He was not attempting to uh, assault the officers, kick, punch or anything of that nature. The Minneapolis police chief also condemning his actions. It's not part of our training. 
and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. The defense arguing the growing crowd of bystanders distracted officers, pressing Officer Nicole McKenzie on the issue. Have you ever had to perform uh, emergency services in a just a, not even a hostile crowd, just a loud, excited crowd? Yes. Is that, in your experience, more or less difficult? It's incredibly difficult. Prosecutors only have to show that Chauvin's actions were a substantial causal factor, even if other issues contributed to Floyd's death, according to Minnesota guidelines. That was ABC's Rena Roy reporting. President Joe Biden's border coordinator is stepping down at the end of this month. Roberta Jacobson was in charge of dealing with three Central American countries on how to reduce the surge of migrants on the U.S. border. The White House says Jacobson agreed to serve only for 100 days. According to a statement, she'll step down at the end of that term on April 30th. Jacobson, Jacobson has denied that she is leaving because Vice President Kamala Harris is taking over diplomatic efforts with those Central American nations. And a federal judge expected to rule on the National Rifle Association's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing next week. If granted bankruptcy protection, the NRA could reincorporate as a Texas nonprofit. Right now, they're registered in New York State. The group announced in January they were planning to leave New York because of, quote, a corrupt political and regulatory environment, end quote. If denied bankruptcy, it would be another blow to the NRA, which is already facing a shift in support in the wake of more mass shootings across the country. The Biden administration will not shut down the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline while an environmental review is underway. That's according to an attorney for the Department of Justice. This it's a blow for the environmental and tribal groups that have rallied against the project for years now. The 1,200 mile long underground pipeline has been carrying hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa and Illinois since 2017. The standing, tr the tribe says the project endangers a key water source, the Missouri River. And happening today, a benefit in New Braunfels, hoping to raise enough money to provide at least 35,000 meals to families in need. The Pillars Christian Learning Center is teaming up with Free Height Country Store and Restaurant to host the Band Together Against Hunger Benefit. Our Alicia Bonetta is live from the center with the details. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Yeah, well, 35,000 meals, but the goal, the amount that they want to raise is $5,000 and they need your help. So already behind me, you can see some of the donations that have been gathered this week. This is a family friendly event and it's kind of like a block party. That's what I'll describe it as. Uh, Garen Anderson, CEO of the Pillars Christian Learning Center. There's a fun game. We promised the bingo. What is it called again? Chicken poop bingo. And it is exactly what it sounds. So you choose a number. You choose a number, and it, much like you would in a, a raffle or something, you choose a number, and uh, then you let the chicken loose, and wherever the chicken poops, that number wins. I think I bet on five. Steven, can you go check if I got five? Because we see two little prizes over there. <laughs> and what else is going on for the families? There's also, so this is more for the kids, well, even for adults, right? Because we're having fun. But also, there's events just for the entire family. It is for everybody. We're out here raising money for the New Braunfels Food Bank. And so we just wanted to create an atmosphere, an event that uh, families, adults, kids, there's something for everybody. We're going to have great food, live music over at Fry Height Country Store. We're going to have a, a giant East, after Easter Easter egg hunt with 4,000 Easter eggs. We're going to have vendors where uh, the families can walk through from uh, folks locally from the community selling their stuff and then a bunch of stuff over here at the Pillars for the kids to do. Garen, thank you so much. So this event is going to take place, starts at noon, and it's going to wrap up around 5 p.m. The address, I'll give that to you, 2144 Gabriel's Place, New Braunfels, but you can't miss it because it's Friday Hut Country Store, and then you just make a short walk over here to the Pillars Christian Learning Center for this fun event. Back to you. All right, Elisa, we're rooting for you there. Chicken poop. Eight, <laughs> 840, 63 <laughs> degrees out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A WNBA team is releasing a new jersey coming straight from the upside down. Whoa. More on the team's inspiration for the jersey that's ahead. This is perfect. You like Netflix shows, I like basketball. There you In go. The 
And do you have a bunch of bulky waste you need to get rid of but don't know how? Well, today is your day, the city having its free landfill day. We tell you all the details next on GMSA. I love free landfill day. We know. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> so much junk. All right, 63 degrees outside. Nice and cool difference from yesterday. Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. Today, it's a very happy day. It's the city's free landfill day. I'm serious. I love this day. You know, she came in. She was like, I have so much to do. <laughs> so much things, very things to get rid of. exciting moment in the Acosta household. <laughs> All right, so if you have bulky waste and you're not sure to do what to do with it, today is your shot. So bring it on by the city's solid waste management department until 1 p.m. You need to bring a copy of your ID, a copy of your most recent CPS energy statement, and make sure to bring cover loads with a tarp. And they have three locations for drop off the Republic Services Landfill, TDS Transfer Station, and Waste Management Landfill. Accepted materials include appliances, carpet, fencing, items, furniture, mattresses, tires, toilets, and water heaters. Remember, this is for San Antonio Solid Waste Management customers only. We have all this information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And if you do have to do yard work, Sarah Spivey, it seems like it's a great day to do it. A great day to do it, although I will say this morning it is a little windy. So if you're trying to do any kind of delicate landscaping, this morning may not be the best time, but in the afternoon the winds are going to calm down quite a bit. Now I want to show you yesterday's high temperatures. So we usually see an average high of 79 degrees this time of year. Yesterday, we were up to 95 in San Antonio. That is 16 degrees hotter than average. Meanwhile, our friends in Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, and Catula, well past the triple digits. They're 103 for the high in Del Rio. That set a record. 104 in Catula and 101 in Hondo. Now, we have had a cold front move through, and while it's not going to be cold, it, it, it is noticeably cooler outside. In fact, this morning, we're sitting pretty at 61 degrees in San Antonio, 56 in Kerrville, 52 in Rock Springs, 64 in Del Rio, almost 40 degrees cooler than yesterday's high out in Del Rio. And you know that that front has moved through because it is just windy. Winds are gusting up to 25 miles per hour generally around San Antonio, but we have seen wind gusts of up to 30, 35 miles per hour. There's where that front is right now approaching Laredo and Corpus Christi. Now, as I mentioned, it's still going to be pretty breezy through about noon around Around noon, our winds will still be gusting up to about 25 miles per hour from the north. But in the afternoon, those winds are going to calm down significantly. And by the evening, we'll have a sustained wind from the north at about 5 to 10 miles per hour rather than 10 to 20 miles per hour. A beautiful Saturday on deck for us, spending most of the morning in the 60s and in the 70s, getting up to 76 around lunchtime, 84 for the high temperature, so 10 degrees cooler than yesterday, and in some places 10 to 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. Sun will set at 758 and we'll see the temperatures cool down pretty quickly. We'll be back in the 60s by about 10 o'clock. Now on our weather pattern, there's where the front is, but all of the rain is to the east uh, of uh, Texas, and we're seeing some severe weather in parts of the panhandle of Florida early this morning. But in the wake of this front here in San Antonio and across the state of Texas, we're going to have a big high pressure system that will move into place, creating sinking air, preventing us from seeing hardly any clouds in the sky and bringing very dry air into uh, the area. So looking ahead to the future cast, as I mentioned, today is going to be nice and sunny. Tomorrow morning we'll be waking up at 54, so it is going to be cooler tomorrow morning than it is today. And in the afternoon tomorrow, a little bit warmer, high temperature in the upper 80s rather than the lower 80s with some clouds moving in, but generally a beautiful day tomorrow as well. Now, as I've mentioned, we desperately need rain. This is a look at the precipitation deficit over the past year. We're seeing a precipitation deficit in San Antonio of up to about 20 inches. What does that mean? It means that we should have 20 more inches in our rain gauges around San Antonio from the last year. So we are very dry. We have areas of extreme drought out there, but our rain chances this week, they don't look great, but we do at least have rain chances every day. An isolated shower or storm is going to be possible every day of this upcoming week. So there is a chance for you to see a little bit of rain. I'm just hoping that as the forecast becomes a little bit clearer, we can bump up those rain chances a little bit more. Another big thing to keep in mind is that Tuesday a front is going to move through. That'll cool us down. Our highs will only be in the 70s, upper 70s for most of next week. Sarah.
Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 849, 63 degrees out. Well, today is National Youth HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. What are the latest developments in HIV prevention and treatment? That story is next. Daniel Downer found out he had HIV when he was just 20 years old. Coming from a background as a preacher's kid where I was very sheltered, where I didn't have any information or I wasn't told about, you need to wear a condom. Andre Nelson also has the virus. I'm my mother's only child, it would break her heart if she had to bury me, especially for something that possibly could be prevented. But these men are living in a time when researchers are making big strides against a virus that used to be considered deadly. One breakthrough in prevention is PREP, a daily pill that people at high risk for HIV can take to prevent the infection. Studies show PREP reduces the risk of getting HIV from sex by about 99%. Recent research has also suggested male circumcision has been an effective prevention strategy for reducing HIV transmission in men. Antiretroviral drugs have become the mainstay therapy. There are seven classes of these meds which interfere with the ways HIV replicates. Researchers are also studying vaccines and stem cell transplants as possible treatments for the virus. For GMSA, I'm Gretchen Neruzzi. And time now is 8.53, 63 degrees out. Well, news. All right. All right. Guess what? You can earn money for eating hot dogs. This Big sounds win. like a lot of fun. <laughs> How many hot dogs do you think you eat in 10 minutes? Like two. Two? Yeah. No way. I'm Max going probably 10. like 16. Oh, I, I could. Sarah Spivey says four. Well, there's a dream job we're going to tell you about next. In your morning consumer news, the WNBA team pulled its newest jersey theme from the upside down world. You want to explain what that means? No, go ahead. All right. So the Indiana Fever f gave fans a preview of their new jerseys on Twitter. I think they look pretty cool. I think they're very cool. The jersey pays homage to the popular Netflix show Stranger Things. Uh, fans of the sci-fi show know that the fictional town of Hawkins is based in the Hoosier State. The jersey features a red and black design inspired by the show's alternate dimension and the Stranger Things, Stranger Things font. There you go. I'm in. Plus, an online gambling site is looking to hire a baseball fan who really likes hot dogs. The casino review site Bonus Finder says it needs someone to be its MLB professional food tester. The chosen individual get paid $500 to eat hot dogs and watch baseball games at Major League Stadium. You have to be at least 21 years old to get the position. And if you think you can handle it, you can apply for the job on Bonus Finder's website. You have until May 2nd. The winner will be selected on May 5th. So not only do you get paid to eat hot dogs, you get paid to go to every baseball stadium across the country. You have until May 5th to apply, Max. There we go. I'm in. 857, 63 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. A recap of last night's top game, Spurs Nuggets. We'll explain what's next. Plus, sharing and spreading the love on this beautiful Aww. Saturday morning. Just ahead, how you can celebrate National Siblings Day. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Nine o'clock this Saturday, April 10th. Yesterday, the sun was shining, the heat was out. Did you make it outside? Yes, I did. I did a lot of outdoor chores, and up until about 1 p.m., I was like, nope. Going inside, can't handle the heat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was a that was a toss to Sarah Spivey. Hey. Can, can you handle the heat? You know I can, you know, because I'm from here, right? But so am I. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've just Shots gotten high. I've, I've gotten high maintenance. Yeah. Spoiled. Maybe. maybe. You're the one who said it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but it is a lot cooler outside right now than it was yesterday in the afternoon. Yesterday in the afternoon, we were dealing with the 90s and even the triple digits in many places. But this morning, we're waking up to the 60s. It's 64 degrees at the airport, 67 in Pleasanton, in the 50s up in the Hill Country, 53 in Lost Maples, 58 in Bandera. Uh, and it's pretty windy out there, too. If you stepped outside already this morning, you know how windy it is. So this morning, windy and a lot cooler outside 
outside, but this weekend we're going to have pleasant weather, especially in the afternoons. It'll be warm, but not too hot, and we'll have low humidity. And finally, in the forecast ahead, we're going to talk about how rain is a possibility next week. We are really seeing some pretty bad things when it comes to the drought this early in the year. So uh, I'll give you the 411 about our rain chances next week and which days have the best chances for rain coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this half hour with Converse police now trying to figure out what exactly happened that led to a man being shot and then found in the middle of the street. This is what we know right now. It happened around 10 last night. Converse police tell us a person saw the man unresponsive lying outside his car on FM 78 under the overpass of 1604. Officers say when they got there, they saw the man had two gunshot wounds to the chest. He was taken to Bamsey at last check in critical condition. Converse police tell us they will be releasing more information later this morning. The Bear County Sheriff's Office also continues their search for a man accused of shooting his own sister. It's been over a day since deputies first responded to a home on Grapevine Street on the west side of the county. Investigators say an argument escalated to the man firing a gun and grazing his sister's shoulder yesterday morning. There is still no word on what led to that argument. Now to the latest on the city and the police union. Now the police union and the city, they only have two more meetings left before the election day to try to come up with a new police contract. Both sides met again yesterday to discuss the appeals process for fired officers, but a solution still needs to be worked out. The last meeting is scheduled for April 19th, but the police union thinks it is likely that negotiations will go past that date. Now the time crunch comes as we near the May 1st election when voters will decide if police officers can even engage in negotiations at all. Next week, the city and police union plan to bring in experts to talk in detail not only about the appeals process, but also about how much officers will have to pay for their health care. Well, banding together to put an end to hunger, that's the goal behind a benefit happening this afternoon in New Braunfels. The benefit will include local music, lunch, free games, and more. It all starts at noon. Our Alicia Beretta is live from the Pillars Christian Learning Center with more on today's family-friendly event. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. So the cool thing about this is not only will the kids have something fun to do on this side of the shopping center, that's with the Pillars Christian Learning Center, but just catty corner to here is Fry Height Country Store. So everyone is familiar with that store here in New Braunfels. And so parents, you have something to do over there. But don't forget that this is all for a good cause to raise money for the hungry. And they've kind of made it easier to your left over here. You can actually see where you can scan to donate. On your screen, I'll put those details today at noon until 5 p.m. The address is 2144 Gabriel's Place, again, here in New Braunfels. And this is for the Band Together Against Hunger benefit. And really hosting all of this is the local learning center that I mentioned. Garen Anderson is the CEO. Why is it so important for y'all to host an event like this, and especially in partnership with local businesses? Well, um, the, the Pillars Christian Learning Center is not new to the San Antonio area, but we're new, new to New Braunfels. And this is just a part of, of who we are. Uh, you know, we, we our, our whole business model is to provide excellent academic development for the kids, extra and, and spiritual development, and then get involved in our communities and um, and really walk the walk and, and get out there and help the communities and be a part of uh, a part of the you know communities to serve however we can. And so you're wanting parents to bring their kiddos or just to bring themselves and have a good time today. I hear there's a petting zoo also, right? There is. There is a petting zoo. We have the chicken poop bingo. We have Kona Ice. We have uh, we have all kinds of things. It's going to be so much fun, and it just it's it's such a support, such a great cause with the New Braunfels Food Bank. Um, so many folks in need. You know, for the last year, you know, the time everything's getting better. The times are getting better, but a lot of the families out there, it hasn't gotten better yet, and uh, it will, but not yet. And uh, this is our chance to help right now. And the dollar amount that y'all are wanting to raise today is a total of five thousand dollars. And that's going to equal 35,000 meals. Gary, thank that's you right. so much. Thank In you. the next half hour, I did ask Max and Sarah to have their numbers prepared because we're going to go back to the chicken poop bingo. And I'm hoping that I will win. I'm not competitive, but today, because it involves chickens, I'm competitive. So stick with us, Max, Sarah. I think you had five, 12, or five and nine, I think. Yeah, right? Alicia, yeah. you had 12, right? 
Do they yeah, remember your number? Okay. You don't remember your number. <laughs> She's got 12. You have nine. Sign it. I'll write it down. All right. Bring go. it on, guys. Chicken poop. We'll be back with that. <laughs> Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> Time now, 9.06, 64 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA. A local teacher has been nominated for the Grammys more than once. We'll let you know how he's inspiring students through music. And after the break, celebrating our siblings, how you can show your appreciation on National Sibling Day. I feel like the three of us are siblings. We're like work siblings. Woo. One big happy family. <laughs> 64 degrees, that's a happy temperature. I like that temperature. Much better than yesterday. Sarah Spivey will let us know about our weekend forecast when we come back. All right, it's not Sarah, just. I wanted you to open up with the dancing. <laughs> Doing my dancing. There we go. She's dancing because it's a holiday. It is. It is National Sibling Day. There you go. So if you have some <laughs> time today, call your sibling, shoot them a text, know them that you let them know that you love them or celebrate them by posting some of your favorite pictures with each other on social media. That is what we did. So this is it. This is my brothers They're Leo triplets. and Phil. They're triplets. They're not triplets, although Leo is now officially taller than me, but he still but can't jump. But your other so brothers are matter. twins. They are twins. As Leo and Phil, Leo's the one that's taller than me. I don't hold any gripes because I'm still better at basketball, so it doesn't really matter. Aw, you have a handsome family, Max. Aw, you these too. Are, these are my, my brothers. I'm the middle girl. Mm -hmm. That's me with the pigtails. And this picture that you're looking at is very old when my brother graduated from dental school, so I was probably like 22. <laughs> it was very young there. That's my younger brother, Jonathan. Love you guys. Is my sister Kaylee Aww. on the on the left there? I'm the taller one, but then she grew a lot taller. Than me. <laughs> taller. And on the right, you can see that's uh, that's me and her on my wedding day. So Aww. your younger I, sister. Yeah, my younger sister. That's exactly right. And she's actually coming in town this week, so I'll Aww. get to see her, and we'll we'll celebrate National Sibling Day over a glass of wine or two. There you go. <laughs> well, I do. You guys have any plans for this weekend? Um, no, not yet. Not yet? No. Spend some time outdoors. That's mm. all I'm going to say. Uh, if you can stand the oak out there, which we'll have that pollen count a little bit later in the show when our, our allergist reports in. Uh, but now outside, it is a lot cooler than it has been over the last few days. It's 64 degrees to start off the day. If you look at this camera long enough, you'll notice it's shaken. And the reason for that is we're seeing wind sustained at 20 miles per hour, but gusting up to 30 miles per hour at the airport officially. But elsewhere, we've seen wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour, 32 mile per hour wind gust in Hondo, 25 mile per hour wind gust in Lost Maples and at Bernie Stage Airfield right there on the Kendall and Bear County line. All of us dealing with a pretty breezy morning. Gonzalez even looking at a wind gust of up to 33 miles per hour right now behind a cold front. This cold front moved through in the early morning hours here and behind it, we're going to have some really pleasant weather this weekend. No rain this weekend, which we need the rain, but if we're going to have uh, no rain, at least it's on the weekend when we can enjoy some time outdoors. Speaking of time outdoors, if you don't love the winds or if you have plans that the winds would interfere, uh, by the afternoon, wind gusts are going to really start to die down quite a bit. In the afternoon, we'll be dealing with a wind from the north at about 10 miles per hour rather than a wind gusting up to 35 miles per hour as we're seeing right now. Now, something this front has also done is it's allowed for much drier air to move into place. It's still pretty humid out near Houston uh, in Corpus Christi where dew points are in the 70s, but behind this front, we're looking at uh, dew points in the 30s and 40s really nice low humidity. We're not going to have to deal with the heat index like we have the last couple of days and, and temperatures are cooler. As I mentioned, it's 56 in Kerrville, 65 in Del Rio. Del Rio was in the triple digits yesterday, 68 in Carrizo Springs and 63 in LaGrange. A wider view, however, you can see the really cold core of air up across parts of the Rockies and in the Panhandle uh, where temperatures are in the 40s and we're even in the 30s earlier. Uh, now all of the rain for the nation is pretty much uh, focused on areas east of the Mississippi River. Some severe weather possible in the panhandle of Florida this morning, but in the wake of that front, we've got really steady air uh, moving into place. High pressure system creates sinking air, pre prevents any kind of uh, rising uh, of clouds or any kind of rain. And so this is going to keep things nice and dry for us this weekend and keep that humidity low, even though, yes, I know we need the rain. And we'll talk about rain in just a bit, but at least 
least the nice weather will be happening this weekend. Temperatures are going to be about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than they were yesterday. Still pretty warm though, 84 for the high in San Antonio, 90 in Del Rio, 90 in Laredo. Better than the triple digits though, and some folks in the Hill Country won't get out of the 70s today. Uh, so gusts up to about 35 to 40 miles per hour through the morning hours, but in the afternoon the, it will not be as breezy. 84 for the high. Sun will set tonight at 758 if you have any evening plans. And this is the downside of the forecast, right? You know, we are seeing extreme drought in these areas in red off to the west of San Antonio into Bandera County and all off across the Winter Garden region. Look at that exceptional drought even near uh, Laredo in Webb County. So this paints a really uh, grim picture about how much we need the rain and over the next several days we're actually going to have rain chances each day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, but our rain chances are going to be pretty low. Really, I can only promise isolated rain in the forecast so far. Uh, and again, we need that rainfall. Hopefully we'll be able to bump up the rain chances here and there in the week ahead. But for now, just know that our rain chances are pretty slim as another front will arrive on Tuesday, dropping our high temperatures even further into the 70s. We need those April showers. Thank we you. We really do. Mm -hmm. All right, time now 915, 64 degrees out. That looks good. Whatever it is, we're going to find out in the Texas Deeds preview. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. That was a lot. <laughs> After the break, we're introducing you to an NEISD teacher making children's school days more exciting through his love of music. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, two, six, fireball, zero, daily four, four, eight, seven, nine, fireball, two. Cash 5, 1, 4, 10, 19, 22. Mega Millions is the big one. Mm. 22, 26, 27, 58, 66. Mega Ball 12, Mega Plier 2. You win. I haven't checked. Can you check my ticket? Ooh. Well, teachers who have stepped up and found creative, safe ways to connect with students this past year, they're our true heroes. So the hard work of one music teacher at NEISD's Rowan Forest Elementary School has not gone unnoticed. This morning, we're introducing you to the music teacher, Matthew Trevino, who was nominated for the Grammys for his creative way of teaching music. The cool thing is this instrument plays in lots of different styles. NEISD's Row on Force Elementary School music teacher Matthew Trevino goes above and beyond when it comes to teaching music to his students. So you could do the old big band swing. His passion for teaching music has been even recognized by the Recording Academy's Grammy Awards. Trevino was nominated for teaching music this year, his third nomination in the past four years. Waking up and getting to to make music with these awesome young little musicians is just the coolest thing. Was an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how she swallowed a cow. He has had to find creative ways to teach music during the pandemic. So he put up a green screen in his classroom and learned how to edit videos. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll cry. But even before the pandemic, Trevino always starts class with dance. He says even if you're not a musical person, dancing to music is a way for all people to connect. That social aspect, whenever whenever we, we, uh, we dance via Zoom or in person, I mean, it's just that chance for us to connect. Between Trevino's fun dancing videos and teaching students about pitch or musical instruments, he says it's the journey of watching his students discover something that they didn't know was special to them. That makes all the work worth it. They walk in the hallway and they'll say, like, oh, this is my favorite place to be. Or like when we open the car doors for them in the morning, they're like, oh, it's my music day. I'm so happy. You know, that sort of thing. It's just really special. She cried, of course. Whee! Hope you enjoyed the story. Well, Trevino has been an elementary school music teacher for 11 years. When he started at Rowan Forest Elementary in 2016, he started the music group called Sonidos. It's a group of fourth and fifth grade students who play on xylophones and one student on the piano and another on the drums. And get this, Sonidos has played at several Spurs games. They played at the Tobin Theater and even selected to perform at the National Teacher Convention. He is amazing. Yeah, he's been nominated for the Grammys three times already. And I told him when I was interviewing, I want to be in your music class. Start with dance. So much fun. 
amazing. All right, 921, 63 degrees out. Well, it's Saturday, Sarah. What does that mean? I don't know, Max. That means we got Texas Eats. We're going to check in with David Elder in a little bit. That looks so good. I know. I'm so hungry. Good morning and welcome back. Look at this. Just starting off the morning the right way. Well, you can't see us yet. Let's see. Can you see it? There we go. Look at this. Can you imagine if it was actually that big? Like Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so get ready. A food tour across Central Texas with our own David Elder on Texas Eats today, 10 a.m. on KSAT 12 right here or on our streaming app. In today's clip, David Elder takes us south of San Antonio to Pleasanton for a restaurant serving classic Texas barbecue. This is the one you got to try when you come out here. Look at this. <laughs> They got big old dino beef ribs on the menu, y'all. A lot of people claim to have these on their menu, but I tell you what, I don't know if I've ever seen one that big before. Look at that. Just load it up, and then look at all that bark on the outside. I'm gonna take a bite of this bad boy. <laughs> y'all, this is special. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. And this one, I mean, it's been off the pit for a hot second, but they keep it over there in a nice holding temp. And so when I just bit into it, it's juicy, just like juicy. Look at that. It's just falling right off. Look at that. <laughs> really good flavors, y'all. I mean, this is like a delicacy. When you think of Texas barbecue, the dino beef rib is like the coveted, oh man, I hope they have dino beef ribs over there. Well, they do. Mmm. Delicacy. Delicacy. Dino Texas, beef ribs. Texas delicacy. I love it. I love it. I'm in. All right, 926, 63 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, major, a major celebrity is considering going into politics. What we know about Caitlyn Jenner and her potential run for California governor. Plus, remembering and gun salutes, Buckingham Palace. There's a lot going on. We have a look at how the late Prince Philip being honored a day after his passing. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. 930 this morning, April 10th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Did you make it outside at all yesterday? I did, um, but then I went inside to the AC from like hot. one to four. It was hot. It was hot out there. The back of my neck got burned. I did wear sunscreen Max, on the face. You got to wear a big hat and sunscreen at all times. <laughs> Just not, around the eyes. I'm just picturing Matt with a uh, Max with a big hat. Not a big hat. <laughs> not a hat guy. I like it. I mean, yeah. Pretty good. So if your fashion skills. Uh, well, unfortunately, there is some bad news in the weather today, and it comes in the form of the pollen count. So we just got this in, and oak has, has risen from yesterday. It's not at its highest numbers so far this season, but it is close to it. Oak is very high at 19,460 pollen grains per cubic meter of air, and the winds are probably kicking up all that pollen even more today as it is very windy outside. On top of that, mold has risen. It is now moderate at 530 spores per cubic meter of air, so not a great day for us allergy sufferers. I've been taking my allergy medicine pretty much religiously, and of course I forgot it today, <laughs> of course. Uh, but just to give you a, an update on oak season, we usually see it peak right at about now, and then by the beginning of May, oak is starting to come to an end. So we've got a couple more weeks of uh, this pretty high uh, mold, uh, pardon me, oak in the pollen count. Uh, and as I mentioned, the winds are not going to be doing us much favor this morning, probably kicking up even more oak pollen. We're seeing wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour at the airport and at Port SA, up to 32 miles per hour out in Hondo. And we have seen wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. All of this in the wake of a cool front that moved through. So even though the oak is going to be high today, at least the weather is going to be pretty nice. We're starting off in the 60s, 64 at the airport, 50s up in the hill country, 59 in comfort. 57 in Kerrville, 62 in Seguin, 67 in Pleasanton. And it will be windy for the first part of the day, but those winds will start to die down in the afternoon. And we'll be looking at a really pleasant high temperature of 84 degrees. A nice welcome change from yesterday's toasty temps. I'll show you just how hot it was yesterday in certain parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area. And of course, we'll talk about our rain chances in the week ahead coming up soon. Max. 
Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we have an update to a road rage incident. San Antonio police telling us the 38 year old woman who was shot has died from her injuries. Police tell us this all stemmed from a road rage incident that ended in a shooting. We're told that drivers of two vehicles had that dispute that ended in front of the Sutton Oaks apartment complex. This is the 2800 block of I-35 North. We're told the driver of the, one of the vehicles pulled out a gun and started shooting, causing the other driver to crash into a gate. Police say that 38 year old woman was shot in the back of the head. A 14 year old girl shot in the shoulder and neck. A seven year old was in the vehicle at the time of the shooting. They are unharmed. Investigators now looking for the suspect who was last seen driving back onto I-35 in a brown colored SUV. If you have any information that can help in the investigation, you are urged to call police. That number 210-207-7273. Now to the latest on COVID, taking a look at the latest numbers in Bear County. At last report, 207 patients are in our local hospitals. The last time we had more than 200 patients was three weeks ago. Meantime, 96 patients in the ICU, 27 on ventilators. We now know 246 new cases were confirmed. Those were from past cases. Fortunately, no new deaths have been reported in the last 24 hours. WellMed is opening up more than 3,000 appointments for COVID-19 vaccines next week. Online registration is now open for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the Doris Griffin Senior One Stop Center. The center is located at 6157 Northwest Loop 410, that address on your screen. Those interested must get their vaccine next Monday or Tuesday. The clinic will be open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. both days. To register, just visit WellMed's website. We have all this information right now on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, memorials and gun salutes taking place this morning after the death of Prince Philip. ABC's Maggie Rooley has the latest from Buckingham Palace. This morning, a nation and the world remembering a man who dedicated his life to service and his country. 99 tolls at Westminster Abbey, one for each year of Prince Philip's full life. The traditional announcement brought to the palace gates. But like all things during the pandemic, the service will look different. Reportedly, plans are underway for a private arrangement at Windsor Castle, as the public is urged to not gather for any related events due to the pandemic. But whatever the size, his legacy will be remembered as larger than life. At Buckingham Palace, a constant stream of people paying their respects. Although he's not, not been necessarily been a king, he's all, we've all looked at him upon as a king. His children speaking out. You ask Anybody who had the privilege of listening to him speak or, or, um, or the, any of the events that he hosted, um, you know, it was always his humour that came through and uh, the, the twinkle in his eye. ABC News has learned Prince Charles visited the Queen at Windsor Castle shortly after his father's passing. I think he'd probably want to be re remembered as, um, you know, as an individual in his own right, really. Prince William and Kate posting this photo of the Duke of Edinburgh on social media. And despite the rift in recent weeks between the royal family and Prince Harry and his Duchess Meghan, the couple posting their condolences online. Reports circulating that Prince Harry is expected to return for England for the funeral. Reaction to Philip's passing pouring in from around the world. The longest serving royal spouse, Philip has stood by the Queen through 73 years of marriage. He treated everybody as an individual and gave them the respect that he felt that was, they were due as individuals. His family often talking of his love for life and his dedication to service. The Duke credited with sparking an enthusiasm for environmentalism that he passed on to his son and grandson. Well, service to him meant to put himself out, not to do necessarily the things he wanted to do for himself, but to serve his wife, the Queen, and make sure that whatever he did was to the benefit of the people within the United Kingdom for the aspirations of a better society, for working better with the environment. Now we now know Edward has also visited Windsor Castle. We saw him there this morning with his wife, Sophie. The two say they were there to support their mom, the queen, because we're also thinking about her this morning as now she starts her first time ruling this country without her partner by her side. Maggie Rooley, ABC News, London. Well, happening in New Braunfels this afternoon, two businesses are teaming up to support Hungary. The benefit, the benefit starts at noon today and all donations will provide meals from the New Braunfels Food Bank. So it really is an amazing experience. Elisa Barrera has been joining us live throughout the morning and joins us once again from the Pillars Christian Learning Center with more on today's event. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Are you all ready for the chicken, the round two of the chicken poop bingo? Max, yes. Sarah? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So we have five for Max, nine for Sarah, 12 for me. We're going to go ahead and put the chicken inside. So parents, this is what you can get involved with your kids. So you pick a number on this board here and let's pray that something comes out y'all because this isn't guaranteed, but oh the event noon <laughs> to 5 out. PM today. And let's hope that by the end of this live shot, you guys, um, that this chicken poops on 12. Oh, good. Because okay. that is a winner nine, and I nine, am a winner. Nine. We'd, oh my gosh, he's right above six, so anything can happen. Garen Anderson, you have planned this with your staff. Oh my gosh. This is better Steven commentating than money shot there. <laughs> <laughs> They are so entertained over here at the studio. Garen, why was it so important to host this event and obviously find activities like this that are going to keep adults and children so entertained? Well, I mean, you just said it perfectly. We were trying to create an event that would and get, get folks excited to come out today, have some fun, no, no charge to get in, and just raise some money for a good cause for the new Braunfels Food Bank. Guys, Garen, come over here with me because we need to see this hat. Come on, little chicken. Can I don't know. He come was. On, come on, come on, my friend. Do we have another chicken? There's three chickens standing by over there. <laughs> I don't know, you guys. This is okay. Now we're putting food to see if anything will happen. But you guys, I think that I'll just have to post this on Instagram and give you an update because the magic is not happening here. Stage we, fright. Stage fright, there you go. I think it's because so many people at home are watching us, which we love. And we hope that all those people can make it out here today. This is a, um, an event for the community. The goal is to raise $5,000, which Garen, you say that's gonna equal to how many meals for the new Braunfels Food Bank? About 35,000. And so you get an idea, guys, this is gonna be like a block party. So right in front of the Pillars Christian Learning Center, this is where the event's going to happen. But Caddy Corner to here is Fry Height Country Store. So live music, good food, games for the kids. We haven't gotten anything, Garen. I, 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 this is a, a trial run, so. Um, we, we got lucky the first time. We did, <laughs> we did. We had a double within like 10 seconds on the first one. And it was a nine, so I think we'll give it to Sarah Acosta because <laughs> The first round was a nine. There so Sarah, go. I guess you can win this one. But for now, our little buddy here has stage fright. Back to you guys. All I've right. never wanted to see a chicken poop oh, so bad. Okay. First off, love his hat, because that's fantastic. <laughs> but also, got to follow Alicia on Instagram because she's going to post a real winner. Okay. You're like the tentative winner. Don't get too excited. Okay. Chicken poop winner right here. All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner? Chicken poop dinner? Sure. <laughs> 940, 66 degrees out. All right. Still ahead on GMSA, a British actress is getting a role in the new Indiana Jones film who is going to be joining Harrison Ford in the final installment. Plus well, remembering a popular rapper from the 90s after the break we are remembering DMX. 66 degrees it's that perfect temperature perfect temperature for chicken poop. Okay. Sarah Spivey. <laughs> Drop the chicken poop. <laughs> it's just so funny. All right Sarah Spivey will have her forecast when we come back. DMX has passed away a week after suffering a heart attack. Born Earl Simmons, he died at White Plains Hospital in New York yesterday with family by his side. DMX, which stood for Dark Man X, began rapping in the early 1990s. He released a number of albums starting in 1998, and the rapper sold millions of them. He was 50 years old. And 71-year-old Caitlyn Jenner, a longtime Republican, has been consulting with GOP advisors as she's considering running for governor. According to a spokesperson for the Republican Governors Association, Jenner has spoken to the executive director about a potential run. The celebrity activist who describes herself as economically conservative, socially progressive in a People magazine interview last year immediately would stand out in a field that so far has failed to attract a nationally known contender. And Harrison Ford has an unexpected co-star in the fifth and final installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is on board for the action movie. The British actress is best known for creating, writing, and starring in the dark comedy Fleabag on the BBC. Details on what character the British actress will play has not been released. The new Indiana Jones movie is set for release the end of July in 2022. All right, so have you seen Indiana Jones? Of course. So I think it was the first three were good. 
Yeah, the and originals. The, yeah, the Crystal Skull. Uh, you lost me a little bit. I haven't done. I haven't seen any of the. Mm. Newer Although ones. I do love Phoebe Waller Bridge. I've never. You know, Fleabag never is a really good show. It's an adult show, but it's a really good show. So. Check it out if you can. All right. Uh, yesterday, it was so, so toasty. In fact, this is a look at yesterday's high temperatures. Max and Sarah, look out toward Del Rio in Catula. In Laredo. I know. 104 in Catula. 103 in Del Rio. That went down as a record. Uh, and here in San Antonio, we got up to 95 degrees. Uh, that is 16 degrees above our average high this time of year, which is 79. So really impressive heat yesterday. And guess what? I got some good news. It's going to be about 10 to 15. 15 degrees cooler than that this afternoon. So all thanks to a cool front which has moved through and we're starting off the day cool and breezy. It's 64 at the airport, 65 in Del Rio, 55 in Rock Springs, 59 in Kerrville, 58 in Fredericksburg, 72 still in Catula though. And as I mentioned, those winds are definitely a breezy. It has been windy all morning long. We've seen wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour at the airport and there's where that front is right now. Just now moving through Laredo and Corpus Christi. Wind gusts of up to 32 miles per hour out in Hondo. If you're not a fan of the winds, though, don't worry, because even by noon, we'll start to see those taper uh, die down a little bit. And we will still have a wind gust of up to about 25 miles per hour possible around lunch. But in the af afternoon and evening hours, our winds will really calm down. In fact, by midnight, we'll probably have light and variable winds around San Antonio. So today is going to be a beautiful day for outdoor activities. If you can stomach the very high oak count in today's pollen count, uh, we'll be at 76 by noon. First part of the day will be windy. Second part of the day, not so windy. 84 for the high sunset at 758 and temperatures will fall pretty quickly into the 60s by 10 and low 60s by midnight. Now here's where that front is right now as it's moving through Laredo, Corpus Christi. All of the rain on the east side of the Mississippi River is bringing some severe weather to parts of Florida. There's been a ton of severe weather across the Gulf Coast states just within the last uh, several weeks. And so uh, they're probably sick and tired of the rain when as we really need the rain here in San Antonio, but we're not going to get it this weekend all because of a high pressure system. Surface high pressure system creates sinking air, prevents rising air, which in turn prevents any kind of rain uh, and it'll bring dry weather into our forecast with low humidity. I mean, it'll feel great outside. It's just that our lawns desperately need some rain. So looking at tomorrow morning, waking up at 54 degrees under total sunshine, so a little cooler than this morning. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, we'll be looking at a high temperature in the mid to upper 80s with a few cirrus clouds around tomorrow. As I mentioned, we need the rain. A rainfall deficit uh, over the past year of up to 20 inches in San Antonio. That means we should have 20 more inches of rain than we have over the last year. And, and unfortunately, our rain chances, although we have rain chances every day this week, our rain chances are only isolated 10 to 20% for um, a few showers and thunderstorms out there this week. So if you get one, you'll be uh, one of the lucky few that actually see rain this week, but we do have to carry a small chance for rain each and every day uh, this week. Another front is going to arrive on Tuesday and that'll cool our temperatures down even more. We'll be looking at highs in the upper 70s and near 80 degrees through the remainder of the week. We're hoping we can bump up those rain chances, but we just have to be realistic here and say isolated at best right now. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 949, 66 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. A tough, tough game last night. We're going to have the highlights and what comes next after the break. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend and go Spurs, go. Spurs and Nuggets closing out a little two-game mini-series in Denver last night, so let's take a look at the highlights. Don't worry, Lonnie Walker IV is back, but to start the show is all DeMar DeRozan, the man, the myth, the legend. There's Lonnie, though. He is back. He has missed a few games because of a wrist injury, as you can see. He has something on his wrist right there. The Spurs had a great first half. Not great there. Those are Vail and McGee with the dunk, but look at this defensive effort. Derek White with the takeaway and the finish. Got to finish strong in the paint. So like I said, really strong first half for the Spurs. Right there, making the buzzer beater. Gotta love it. DeMar DeRozan finished with 24 points. Keldon Johnson, 15. Derek White, 25 as well. But at the end, the Spurs could not maintain their lead in the second half. They would lose after two last chance buckets. Didn't make them. 121 to 119. But we are far from done. 
Spurs next game going to be tomorrow taking on the Dallas Mavericks at the American Airlines Center. Tip off begins at 7 p.m. The real talk of the weekend, though, is golf. The Masters Tournament first round leader Justin Rose. He struggled in round two yesterday. Rose's second shot on the par three. Fourth, putting the ball just doesn't make the green. Let's see, so close, boom! There he is, one of his four bogeys on the front nine. 14, he sunk the long putt. Now Rose would finish the day at seven under par the way he started shooting at par. Defending champion Justin Johnson from the bunker on 18, he comes up short of the green. Didn't make the weekend, didn't make the cut. Bogey five to miss the cut by two shots. There's Big Will, played great mood into second place tie. Par four, 18, and he comes up with a great shot. He would birdie for a four under. 68 sits six under overall. And Texan, wait for it, Jordan Spieth. He was on yesterday. Par five, 15th shot. Checks upon, oh, who would birdie? Bang! He sits at five under after shooting four under yesterday. Two strokes off the lead. Taking a look at the leaderboard. Justin Rose still sitting up top. Big Will, Brian Harmon, Jordan Spieth. Mr. Lone Star himself. So there we go. Bubba Watson, even par. Lefty just made the cut after three over. The same cannot be made for Jimmy Walker, Dustin Johnson, or Rory McIlroy, who all missed the cut. I had Rory in the top ten, so clearly not a great weekend. But Cameron Smith, remember the name. Is this why you went golfing yesterday? That is you why were I feeling went. inspired, Max. I, I would like you to do it again. Well, I can't really Beautiful. do it. No, 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 it's great. <laughs> great range of motion. 955, 66 degrees out. I know how to play golf. I know. Okay, handling finances can be stressful, and a new study shows majority of Americans fear checking their account balance. Tomorrow oh. on GMSA, we explain what many are now calling ATM anxiety. Oh, and a big birthday shout out. Jonathan Cotto, one of our Night Beat reporters. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Jonathan came onto our team about a year now. He's been here for about a little under a year. Well, happy birthday, Jonathan. We wish you the best. In the news you need to know before you go, fire crews working for hours on a fire at a church on the city's east side. It started just after 11 o'clock last night. The Huntley Park Baptist Church firefighters say it took several hours for crews to contain the fire and put out those hot spots. As of now, crews are not sure what caused the church to to burn down, but arson investigators were called out. CPS crews were also on the scene to cut off the electricity. Tomorrow on Leading SA, we are speaking with the San Antonio Business Journal's 40 Under 40 Man of the Year, Akeem Brown. Akeem is involved in a lot of aspects of the city, specifically development of the east side of San Antonio via, via Metro Transit Board and numerous public education rules. So if you have any questions you would like to ask Akeem Brown, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And I just got to show you this pollen count again. It's Ooh. unfortunate how high oak is. Oak is very high past 19,000. Mold is also present in the atmosphere and is moderate. Uh, now today is going to be a beautiful day this Ooh. weekend. I mean, we're going to be looking at temperatures uh, in the 80s and then in the week ahead, temperatures only in the 70s. A small chance for rain each day. All right, Sarah, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Texas East. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for a Hill Country barbecue joint serving up a brisket cheesesteak. Plus, we're going inside of a wild pizza joint slicing up scorpion pepper infused sausage and a Mexican seafood restaurant that's serving massive micheladas. stop is at a new barbecue joint 30 minutes south of downtown San Antonio in Pleasanton, Texas. Let's see what's smoking at Cowboy Smokehouse Barbecue. Husband and wife duo Adam and Rachel Rodriguez opened the barbecue joint in what used to be Rachel's house. We just 
both decided why not make a barbecue place. Adam and I lived here four years uh, when we decided, okay, you know what? It's time to make this place more of a commercialized uh, property because of the traffic flow picking up and subdivisions going up behind us. Now, they're serving up classic Texas mesquite smoked barbecue like their giant dino beef ribs. This is the one you got to try when you come out here. Look at this. <laughs> they got big old dino beef ribs on the menu, y'all. A lot of people claim to have these on their menu, but I tell you what, I don't know if I've ever seen one that big before. Look at that. Just load it up and then look at all that bark on the outside. I'm going to take a bite of this bad boy. <laughs> y'all. This is special. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. And this one, I mean, it's been off the pit for a hot second, but they keep it over there in a nice holding temp. And so when I just bit into it, it's juicy, just like juicy. Look at that. It's just falling right off. Look at that. Oh, really good flavors, y'all. I mean, this is like a delicacy. When you think of Texas barbecue, the dino beef rib is like, the coveted, oh man, I hope they have dino beef ribs over there. Well, they do. This is why I would get in my car and drive down here to Pleasanton to come try this barbecue, the dino beef rib. Top of my list. This is probably one of the favorite bites I've had in a while for barbecue here in Texas. The barbecue joint has only been open for a few months, but for the Rodriguez family, this has been years in the making. The opening day was during this pandemic. So I, we actually pushed it back five months. And then we pushed it back again. So we finally decided, because you know what, we're either gonna run with it or not. Now it welcomes hungry guests looking for some killer barbecue. This is our first time here, as a matter of fact. What did you get? Uh, I got brisket. You know, Ooh. It's always, always brisket. It's Texas, right? <laughs> <laughs> I used to drive, go get some good barbecue out in uh, Newling or Lockhart, but don't need to go all the way over there now. You got smokehouse here now. It's good. Also on the menu, slow smoke certified Angus briskets. This is why I love Texas barbecue, baby. Look at that. Big old hunk of piece of marbled meat. Now, the brisket test, right? You have the meat right here. Now, it's holding up on its own weight, but when you pull on it, look at that. <laughs> it just falls right apart. All that fat is just reducing down. It's breaking down, it's going into the meat. A nice salt and pepper exterior as well. Straightforward, it's the way Texas barbecue should be. Here we go. It's like meat butter. That's all it is. Oh, it's so good. And you're seeing that honeycomb texture in there. You're seeing all that fat. This is a quality piece of meat that they're transforming into a killer piece of brisket. This barbecue spot is also known for their pork ribs, sides, and desserts. A lot of people don't like it too smoky, and so I cut back on the smoke and give more of a flavorful meat. If you're looking for some pork ribs, man, they got you covered out here. They got it on the menu, pork spare ribs. Check that out. Just loaded, nice texture on the outside, good smoke ring, and that bark on there is killer. You can see all that texture. It's so granulated and just beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go in for a bite, and it just looks incredible. This is like, again, melts in your mouth. You could eat this with dentures. You could eat this with no teeth. It's just falling apart. A nice, subtle, sweet flavor on the outside, but the bark is really, really prevalent on here. And then you have the inside. The meat is just tender. Once again, it's about the quality of the meat that they're using out here as well. I mean, you gotta have pride in what you're doing. And you can tell just by taking a bite that they got a lot of pride in what they're doing out here. This is a classic family-owned Texas barbecue spot, only a short distance south from San Antonio. It's such a blessing. I, it's, it's a huge privilege um, that we all get to work together, help each other out. And, you know, at the end of the day, we get to go home and discuss how wonderful the day was and how many people we made happier put smiles on their faces and um, of course you know we discuss the hard work too sometimes that we feel tired and whatnot but at the end of the day it's just it's all worth it you guys all the way from the brisket to the pork ribs the beef ribs the sausage and all the sides 
They are killing it out here at Cowboy Smokehouse Barbecue. I mean, just look at that. You can get the dino beef rib and go crazy. I'm a fan. I will definitely be coming back to have this dino beef rib. One of the best dino beef ribs I've ever had in my entire life. Great flavor, great texture, and it's a, it's a mom and pop. This is a family owned business and they're doing it right out here. One of the hardest times to open up a business and they're killing it. I absolutely love it. You guys gotta come check them out. Now, we're headed to central San Antonio to go inside of a popular Mexican restaurant just in time for pozole season. Let's go inside Guajillo's, a shortcut to Mexico. Joining us now is Carlos Barajas. He's the general manager and the son out here at Guajillo's, a restaurant that's been in San Antonio since 1999, serving up delicious Mexican food. And we have a lot of stuff in front of us oh, here. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me out here. Uh, this smells amazing, and you said the salsa is one of the reasons why people continuously come out from all over Texas, right? Oh, Austin, we have flat attendants come in, they bring little water bottles, they, we fill it up for them, we sell it to go. <laughs> we do about a, 140 liters wow. a week of salsa. That's dining in and to go. That's incredible. You have fideo and alambre here, and then you have the pozole, but let's talk about the fideo. What makes it special? What makes it special is that when, when people come to have fideo, the minute they talk to me, they're like, hey, this reminds me of my aunt or my, my abuelita that, that's been making me fideo since I was a kid, you know? Yeah. It just brings back the Mexico flavor that you, oh. you see what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Right. So when you're here with the atmosphere and you add that with a michelada, ooh. <laughs> nice. Hey, yeah, you're yes. going to be golden, yeah. Now you, you sold me a michelada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to feel like you're at grandma's house, you order the fideo. We use the angel hair pasta. Um, it's important to fry the, 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 the noodles before right. you, you throw in the mix everything. This, it's like all the flavors that you love about fideo, you've condensed them even more, so you're gonna get punched in the face with like that savory, salty goodness. Exactly. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna try this one right here. Talk to me about your alambre and why this one is a little bit different than one you could find in another restaurant here in San Antonio. <laughs> Well, we do uh, tacos and food strictly from southern Mexico, but this is very, uh, very popular in Mexico City, the alambre. And usually you get tacos, you can have the pastor bistec, you can get individual tacos. But usually when you order alambre, it's gonna be five or six tacos. It's cooked fresh, we don't, we don't make anything uh, pre-made. And the cheese is optional. This is Some incredible. people like cheese, but you can always ask you for it. You gotta get it with the cheese. When you do the alambre here. Now, this is almost like, the, I don't know which one came first in a sense, but like kind of like a Mexican Philly cheesesteak, if you want to call oh, it that, Oh, yeah, you right? can see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it is. I don't know which <laughs> one came first, but then you would call it that one, but it's incredible. The bacon in there has a really nice flavor to it. Good crunch on the veggies as well, but the pork has a really good flavor to it. There's like every little item brings its own thing to the table. You take it all Add with one bite. Add some salsa to it. Okay, you, want, you might want to be blown, do that right now. All right, you know what? I'll burn my mouth a little bit more. No, this, no it tastes got, different with food. It, like, it, it by has a different chip, it's different. I make, I have it in my house, make a sandwich, boom, salsa, boom, done. That it's is amazing. Really, that takes a And you'll be back there. tomorrow for more tacos. I'll tell you that right now. If you love cheese, you gotta get the alambre tacos. It's a little bit of the bacon, the pork on there, and the peppers, the onion, all mixed together. Absolutely incredible. You can pick each little taco up. It's ooey, it's gooey, it's cheesy, it's delicious. You gotta put the salsa on it, and it really does. When you have it with the food, it like balances out the heat. And it really yes, makes it, it does, just a yeah. really good bite. Mm -hmm. The last dish here, talk to me about what's going on. Uh, we have pozole rojo. It's made with uh, chili guajillo broth and a, made with pork. So it's very, very, very popular here. <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we used to just have it seasonal which meant we had it from October to like March. You know, most people like to have soup in the cold. Right. But I can have soup any day, it doesn't matter. And this is another one, you said people yeah, so come used, from all over used, the place. Oh yeah, we have, uh, we also have another pozole, pozole verde, which is made with chicken. Well, that's Ooh. a different broth, it's made with pumpkin seeds, poblanos, lettuce, all bl uh, blended into a sauce. Mm. Or into mm. a broth, actually. Give me some love. That's the pork incredible. Because you gotta cook the pork separate. That's the key. I will come back every day of the week for this dish right here. This and now we serve, we serve it every day, Yeah. Uh, seven days a week. The fideo is excellent, the alambre is amazing, but if you're gonna get one dish here, one dish, 
got to get the pozole. You will drink it with the straw. It'll change your life. It is so good. The meat is so tender. This is probably the best pozole in San Antonio. All right, when you're out here, you're going to eat the pozole because it's just amazing, right? And you're going to get some on your shirt. It just happens. And as you can see, you're going to get ice cube. You got to clean yourself up. That's just a part of the process. That's what you got to do. The fideo, the alambre. This is all incredible stuff here. My uncle is actually a chef uh, from Mexico. Um, he came up, we decided to open a restaurant. When you walk in, everyone knows everybody. It's like a big family. And also when you're eating here and, and the noise and you feel like you're in the Tianguis or you're somewhere in Mexico and, and you, you, that's the connection they have. And, the, and people, I've actually had people cry here because they can't go back to Mexico, you know? So they, as a customer, they feel like that connection and it brings them home and they're back every time. How does that make you feel, knowing that that's the service, that's the food you're providing? Well, I'm, I'm joyful because I can bring something to the community. Once they have the pozole, they start pouring their heart out to, heart out to you, <laughs> telling their stories, things you don't want to know, right. but they tell you anyway. <laughs> that, I, well, thank you so much again. Give me some love, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. The food, the people is why you need to come out here. The pozole is the dish that you have to try. I don't care what else you get. The alambre, the fideo, but you've got to get this as well. Incredible stuff. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. If you order the pozole, got to bring an extra shirt. Later in the show, we're going to a hot pizza spot that's putting scorpion pepper infused sausage on their pizza. And next, we're going inside of a seafood restaurant known for massive micheladas. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.